course I would have to. When Stanley came to a set That's of two weird, open really. doors, he entered the door on his left. Right, let's go on to the left this time. Well, that room was different. Ooh, door. Nope. Door. Nope. Door. Nope. Door. Nope. Ah. Oh. Meeting room. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Okay, so I found the whiteboard ending apparently. A uh, meeting room. Uh, lots and lots and lots of stuff. Do not alter without consulting the whiteboard manager. I'm not gonna. I won't, I won't touch it. No one saw that. I love just looking at little details of games sometimes, especially in this game. Uh, who moved my desk? Please keep tight. It's off to. Oh god. Uh, employee. <laughs> you got employee. Uh, four seventeen, four ninety one, four three one, four five, four sixteen, and Jim. <laughs> Tomorrow, complete today's unfinished agenda items. Right next day's agenda. Reflect. <laughs> Anything interesting on the? Uh, get here. Maybe not. Brought some coffee on the floor and not. Uh, what's this? What do people want? Things. Money. More money. Things but with money to buy more things. Graphs. Graphs about things and money. We have our new product. <laughs> Stock market. Uh, stripes. Required more secondary research. What isn't hot? Profits. Profits. <laughs> <laughs> it's about profits wrong halfway through there. Different type of profit. Uh, bio quarterly post review review. We need reviews. 402 plus 405. Want to get rid of the death sport portion in the primary review, review schedule. But I think that's a stupid idea. More water coolers. More water coolers. <laughs> more water cooler heaters. Uh, charts needed to be more hip to appeal to teenage demographic. Find teenagers put in teenage uh, tem demographic big net. Same sort of child trap. <laughs> Work harder, hard worker. Okay. A lot of percentage. Teenagers. Size of demographic. Okay. Throw something in the bin. Uh, <laughs> throw something in the ideas bin. <laughs> oh god. Ooh. What's on the back of there? Better safe than profits. And unreadable stuff. And then you have words. Let's just move on. Yeah. Ooh. What's this? Oh. This one opens. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. Oh, uh, I don't know, I quite like it in her. It's quite... It's quite nice. There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Is there anything I can click? Maybe secret? Any secrets? Game, have you got it any secrets? It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least, if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> okay. I can't interact with anything anyway. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Should I go to my boss's office? I don't want to. Not yet. Oh, Jesus. A bit stuck. Anything interesting? Nope. Looks like we're going through this door. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. 
Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So, he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Oh, God. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. Jesus. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. God. Oh. Hello. We're back. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. 